we're back. If I lean like this multiple times, it's not because I'm hurt or anything, it's because uh, this chair that I'm using is sticking into the ground because the snow's melting. So, uh, there's that. Um, and look who has decided to join us. If you touch that, I'm going to kill you. All right, guys, uh, we have a special guest. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Now that the uh, live studio audience has dissipated, we can get into what we're doing today, which is a new table series, which I have entitled Every Word. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing this every time I talk, but anyway, um, back on topic here. Um, this is gonna be basically a basic word study for any interesting words that I find in the Bible, you know, different things. You'll understand kind of more how it works after today. Um, nothing insane, not, nothing, you know, groundbreaking, I'd say. I, I just think it'll be a little fun and a good way to share some interesting thoughts with you guys. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just, just all around a grand time. So, today we're going to be looking at the word subtle. Now, some people out there might say, oh, you spelled it wrong. I didn't. The title of this video is um, spelled after the same manner as the Bible uses the word. Uh, the spelling's changed, but I don't care. That's how the Bible spells it, so... Boo-hoo. All right, subtle. Now, this word is used only three times in the Bible, which I find interesting. And all three of those times, it's in actually in a pretty big situation. It's, it's very recognizable, um, kind of staple passages of the Bible almost. It's very iconic, I guess you could say. Um, very memorable. All very popular for the most part. Um, to people who really read their Bible, you, everybody, you should be able to recognize these. They're not too obscure. They're not like some random passage in the Psalms. So, Let's look through them, and it's interesting because each time the word is used, it's, it's, it's a different Hebrew word, they but they translate it as subtle. So let's look at all these. Firstly, the first one, I think most people, when, this, when you hear the word subtle, talking about the Bible, the verse that comes to mind is probably Genesis 3.1, and I will turn there, um, just for the sake of showmanship, because I have all the verses on this piece of paper here, my little script, but I'll turn there just because, uh, you know, why not? <laughs> Uh, in here in Genesis 3.1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle. Now, uh, this, word, this, this word right here, subtle, um, I think, obviously, we all know the story of Satan, you know, sneaking into the garden and tricking, the, um, tricking Adam and Eve. Um, so it's an interesting word. So this is the passive participle of H. So Hebrew, this is um, Strong's, I believe, uh, 6191. It's cunning, usually in a bad sense, crafty, prudent, subtle. Um, it's this Hebrew word is used 11 times in the Bible, and other, where, uh, other places it's translated as crafty and prudent. So I feel like this one is, um, is interesting, because like I said, each of the, they're translated differently each time. This one, I guess, is, is almost more of like a, an ambiguous word. And clear, here it's obviously used in a bad way because it's the devil. But it, it's, it's interesting just the way it's translated in other places. Um, it's pronounced... <laughs> all right, so this is uh, all room, I would say. I'm not sure if that's correct or not, but... There you go. That's how it's spelled, it seems to be. But uh, yeah, crafty or prudent, it's, it's translated other places. So it's kind of more of like a general purpose word. Um, but it was, it was this passage actually that made me come up with the idea of looking for all the titles in the Bible just because it's like, you know, kind of a word that you don't see often. So I was like, oh, I wonder how many there are. There's only three, which is interesting. But um, it's, a, uh, it's a masculine, singular, um, absolute noun. Uh, and it's an adjective. Well, not an absolute noun, but an adjective. So it's kind of a continuous thing. It's not like partial or anything. So that's Genesis 3.1, it's kind of interesting. Uh, and I also like how, you know, and you'll notice in two of these, the subtle person in question, um, this one, it's the devil. The next one, it's, well, we'll see, but it's, uh, it's Amnon's friend. It, they start out by asking a question. They start out by asking a question. Um, and they're, they're, really, they're all, all three of the situations, it's three people, um, and all three of them, it's interesting because it's like they're they're trying to sell you on the idea that it's going to be good for you that this is something you want um, i've been reading some books i've been reading this book lately titled um how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie um and that's something that's kind of interesting is that's like the beginning of the book it's talking about in order to get someone to do something the best way to get them to do what you want them to do is more or less now he's using it as like to make sure it only helps them out but i think the devil uses that same thing in that he says, oh, you know, this is what you want me to do. You make them want to do that thing that you want them to do. 
And um, that's a good way to get people to do stuff. And the devil loves to use that way because he makes us think, oh, this sin's going to make you happy or, you know, do this or marry this person or whatever. And it's, it's for your own good, you know. Um, and when we sin, we're not really serving ourselves like we like to think. We're not doing what we want. We're doing what the devil wants. You're, not, you're never really doing what you want to do directly because you're always doing either what God wants or the devil wants. You really, you know, you, um, you're never really going to be doing what you want to do because at, at the end of the day, what you want to do is just what the devil wants you to do. So you're really, if you think you're just kind of in the middle ground, you can't be in the middle ground. There's no middle ground. This is turning into a sermon. Um, <laughs> well, anyway, my, my point is this. He's, he's trying to get her to think, hey, you know, he doesn't even say anything about what he wants. He says, oh, this is what you should want. Well, I mean, you want to have all knowledge and wisdom, right? You want to be like God, right? I mean, you know. So that's what he does. So that's, so that's Genesis 3.1. The next one is in 2 Samuel 13. Yeah, back here. I'm, I'm lost. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 13. And this is the story of Amnon and uh, not, not Hagar, Tamar. Um, and I think we all know this story. Amnon gets encouraged by his friend, Jonadab. It says here in verse 3, But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very subtle man. Um, so I guess they're actually cousins, which is just throwing your own cousin to the boat kind of stinks. Because basically, uh, if, if you're not familiar with the story, Amnon was kind of, uh, he, it says he loved, but he didn't, he, it really, it's, it's lust. He lusted after his cousin, or rather his, uh, his, his sister, um, and he wasn't supposed to marry your sister. That, that was this, none of this was anything biblical. Uh, it was just a common practice of the day to try to marry your sister or someone who's uh, close to you like that, which is weird. Um, <laughs> but anyway, he, get, he gets, he basically gets his friend, he's all sad about it, and then his friend sees he's sad, and he's like, you know, we see uh, verse 4, and he said, Why art thou being the king's son? Just like the devil, starting with a question. You know, you shouldn't be doing this. This is not who you are. You're the king's son. You should get whatever you want. Um, uh, not lust. That's not something you should give as the king's son. Um, but, he, you know, he, he gets beguiled, basically. He gets encouraged by his friend to do this thing, and his friend gives him this plan. He does the plan, ruins Tamar's, uh, you know, virginity, destroys her testimony, basically. Even though it was not her fault, you know, it's still kind of something that, you know, destroyed her, I'm sure, emotionally for a long time. And uh, later on, um, Amnon here gets killed uh, by Tamar's brother because he's he gets revenge on him, basically, for what happened to Tamar. Anyway, that's that's the context. But um, Jonadab here is, is described as being a very subtle man. Um, and the subtle here is... Uh, is actually a different, like like I said before, it's actually a different word than all the other ones. It's interesting. Let me look at it here. It's pronou- <laughs> This is a fun one. Uh, call comb. I don't know if that's cor- correct or not. Uh, call comb. I don't know. It's H2450. You can look it up and read it to me, and uh, uh, not read it to me, but put it in the comments and tell me how retarded I am. I don't really care. Um, it's from uh, H2449, which is Y, so it's kind of wise, intelligent, skillful, or artful. And I think that's interesting. It's kind of like, each of these almost has like, an, like a synonym that you could use. So I feel like for, the, for the, uh, the devil, it's cunning or crafty, I feel like. Crafty would be the one. He's, he's tricky. And then artful, this guy, <laughs> it's kind of funny he uses that artful. He's, uh, it's an art form for him to lie to people and trick people. And it kind of is. Lying is kind of an art that, you know, they have all those detective stuff about. You know, don't do this with your eyes. You know, just trying to spot people lying. And I guess this guy's pretty good at lying. He made an art. It's kind of an interesting thought. Um, so that's that's uh, that's number two. I think the third one is probably, in my opinion, the most interesting. Uh, this this by the way, this Hebrew word is used um, 137 times. So that's that. That one is the most used. And this one is kind of uh, this next one, which is in Proverbs 7:10, is used 62 times. So. Um, most of these words are described other places just like wise or cunning like I was reading before. Um, actually, let me check. I think they have that written down here. It's, uh, oh, I didn't ever write it down. Well, okay, well, I, I, yeah, oh, here we go. Translate elsewhere as cunning and wise. So, it's mainly like wise, cunning. It's, it's not always a bad thing. It's just, uh, it's just not very good either. <laughs> In this situation, it wasn't very good for Ammon for sure. Um, so Proverbs 7.10, here we are. And behold, they're met. So this is, most of us probably know this one. This is um, in Proverbs, obviously Solomon writing this. I don't think this is a uh, analogy because he says, um, you know, 
for at my window, he says it like it's a story. He doesn't say it like, and um, basically what could happen is there could be a guy, he says, I saw. It doesn't seem like very figurative language to me, so it seems to be an actual story that happened. And um, anyway, he, it's about this young man that goes and gets and hooks up with this harlot, and he just Solomon talks about how horrible it is. Like verse 23, he says, Till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hastes to the snare. Ugh. He know, and knoweth not that it is for his life. So he's saying this guy thinks it's just all good and dandy, but it's going to kill him and destroy him in the long run, um, whether that be spiritually or even physically. Um, but verse 10, And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Um, and so she's subtle of heart. Now this is probably the most interesting version of this word used because I was looking into it and this probably has the most backstory. It's pretty fascinating. Um, the first word for the, the one used um, about the devil is like crafty, sneaky. Next one, I'd say maybe like artful, like, you know, he's, he's not like, he's cunning, he's artful, he has, he has purpose, he has, and he, he's very good at disguising what he wants. Um, but then this one is like kind of, those two are kind of like synonyms basically, they're very similar. Um, they're still a little bit different, I'd say, but they're not quite the same, uh, but they're very similar. But this one is just off, way off the side in a way. It's, uh, it's translated elsewhere as kept to keep and the watchmen and watch. Um, this is uh, Hebrew 5, or H5341. Uh, it says a primitive root, to guard in a good sense, to protect, maintain, obey, or a bad one, to conceal, besieged, hidden thing, keep, monument, observe, preserve, subtle, watcher. Um, it's pronounced <laughs> not sar. I. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, we'll say not sar, okay? I don't think that's right, but uh, you try to read these off. I mean, I'm sure you probably know how to. I don't. I'll learn eventually. So, this is kind of like, this. it's saying that she's got this subtle heart. She's saying she's keeping her heart. So, the other two are kind of using this word as like they're smart about what they're doing. They're not an idiot. They're wise to the ways of deceiving people and tricking people and getting people to do what they want. But this one is like, she is... Uh, she's subtle of heart in that she's keeping it like a watchman like she's like she's like guarding her heart like she's concealing it she's got hidden motives she's got uh you know she's being secretive she has this this hidden thing she's not going to show him she's she's acting one way but in her heart um another and this guy falls right into a trap um, it's very interesting it's a very interesting word I, I think it's really cool and it's interesting just how it's used here because it's only translated as subtle once and i think it's translated as oh it's like uh hidden things or something somewhere else but it's very interesting it's besieged so it's like this guarded like it's just like this army is guarding her heart from this guy so he can't see what she really wants he thinks she wants oh he's just being nice but really like verse 23 says in uh, proverbs 7 and he knoweth not that it is for his life she's trying to just ruin him and isn't that the truth and throughout all three of these um we see a common theme, which is that it's somebody trying to get somebody else to sin. And sadly, in all three of them, that person is successful. Um, so what can we learn from this, I guess, today to apply it? Uh, well, you gotta, you got to have spiritual discernment to, to spot the intentions of certain people. Certain people might act like, oh, they're your friend, but they're not really trying to help you out. Like the harlot, or not the harlot, actually. He's, she's never called a harlot. She said it says uh, she's dressed with the entire in the harlot. So this might have just been some normal girl that's just, you know, a whoremonger. But regardless, she she acted like one. <laughs> she acted like a harlot. But whether that be like that, you know, the devil comes to us and he tries to make us think, oh, this is really for my own good. This is this is me. Who, you know, he's trying to help. The devil's trying to help me out. You know, yeah, he wants you. To, the devil wants you to do what's right in your own eyes. He wants you to do what you think is the right thing to do. And that's most nine times out of ten, what we think is the right thing to do is the worst thing to do. Um, so, yeah, I guess just ask God for spiritual... Man, I'm really good at talking. Spiritual discernment. And um, got to be very careful with who you hang around, who you pal around. You know, there's, a, there's an example of a stranger, the devil, and then there's a friend. Uh, be careful who you hang around with your friends, because they might not, you know, they may... Uh, I mean, because the second that Jonadab hears about uh, this slaughter in um, the place where they're doing the shepherd stuff, the sheep shearing. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. He, I don't even know if he had heard. I think he just knew what was going to happen. So I, I, I almost think that he was setting himself, his friend up to die. Like he, he wasn't, he wasn't even trying to help him sin. He was just, he wanted him to die. I, I, I almost wonder, because he's subtle apart. He's a pretty smart dude. So I think he saw what was going on and said, oh, I know I can get rid of Amnon out of this picture. I don't know. You know, we'll never know until we get to heaven.
Um, but regardless, I think that goes to show how important it is to choose your friends and choose your avenues and choose where you're at at certain times because there just might be some people waiting there for you to uh, come at you with some subtlety and take you out. So that has been the first episode of Every Word. Um, table time, well, no, not table time. The table number two. Thank you for joining me today um, here at the table. Uh, have some more stuff coming out soon, as usual. Um, got a lot of big plans for the summer. It's going to be awesome, I think, um, provided that everything continues as it's going. And even if, not, even if all of the plans totally fail, I think it's going to be an awesome summer just because and we are in the most incredible time to be alive, I think. Um, stuff's going on that's crazy. And the future is looking bleak, which makes it cool because we can shine all the more brighter. So this is Boy with the Bible from the table here in um, the mountains of Colorado, wishing you a uh, good rest of your day, um, whatever it may be. Maybe you're watching this in the middle of the night. Um, I pray that God would bless you if you are trying to serve him. And if not, I pray that he'd chasten you so that you would serve. Uh, and I pray the same for myself. Have a good rest of your day. I already said that. I'm horrible at wrapping things up, as you can tell. Anyway, goodbye. Why? I said that really aggressively. Okay, whatever. Bye.